Good evening, listener. I don't get many visitors here at Black Cat Manor, but there is a road that passes nearby, and sometimes on dark and stormy nights like tonight, weary travelers will lose their way, and I give them a room for the night in exchange for a terrifying tale from their own lives. Tonight, I'm joined by identical twin brothers, Justin and Jason McDowell. I hope they enjoy their stay, and I hope you enjoy their stories. Hello. This is a story about one of the scariest times in my life. I was going to bed, all dressed up in my pajamas, and I got a phone call from a friend, and I wondered, why is she calling so late? And so I answered it, and she said, I think there is someone in my house. I was pretty tired because I was going to bed, and I didn't quite know what to do, and so, folks, if this happens to you, don't call your friend from across the street. Call 911. But... In lieu of that, she called me, and I had to figure out what to do. Now, if your friend calls you and tells you that there is someone in their house, don't try to help right away. Just call 911. But I didn't do that either. Instead, I grabbed an axe, which I had gotten in Europe on a vacation while I was in high school. It was a decorative medieval axe. It looked like it came out of Lord of the Rings. And I decided, since this was the weapon that I had, I was going to take it across the street and threaten whoever was in this house. So I go outside, I'm crossing the street, still wearing my pajamas. As I'm in the middle of the street, my mind starts to wander, and it wonders, what if some of the neighbors are looking at me carrying an axe across the street in the middle of the night to someone else's house in a somewhat threatening manner because I'm trying to be threatening in case there's someone in the house. But I'm already in the middle of the street and I'm trying to help my friend and so I decide it's now or never so I keep pressing on and I get to the house. The front door is cracked open slightly and so to me that means that there was someone in the house. And so my nerves are going crazy. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do if there's someone in here. And so I kind of kick the door in, not so it breaks things, but, you know, just to make noise and be loud. And I go stomping through the house, and I didn't see anybody. And so I call out to my friend and her roommate, and they're hiding in the closet. And they come out, and we start talking about what's happening. While we're talking, suddenly, they scream out. Everybody goes into a panic, and we all go fleeing into the closet. And that tells you how good I am with an axe and an intruder. So we're all in the closet, not knowing what to do. I didn't see anything. I just heard the scream and saw them take off, and I took off with them. And while we're in the closet, I came up with this brilliant idea. Call 911. So I call and I tell them what we think is going on, and eventually they come, they knock on the door, they end up coming inside, and no one was in the house. We go out to talk with the police, and give our statements, and the upstairs neighbor comes downstairs to go out to his car, and that's when the police surround him, and he has no idea what's going on, because he was just doing laundry. And when the girls screamed out, they actually saw their neighbor coming home with his laundry and thought he was the intruder returning. So at the end of the night, we don't know exactly what happened. Because when I came in, the front door was definitely cracked open. So was there someone in there? We might not know for sure, but that's the story. Hopefully that didn't scare you kitties too badly. Next up, here's Jason. So there we were. Like, we went sledding, and then there was this kid that was obviously, 
like, I don't know, he had a rough childhood or something like that, and he was just, he just like, started picking on me for some reason. He, he wanted to, I don't know, he was just, like, being a dick for no reason. Like, there was, there was nothing that we had done to invoke his annoyance, but for some reason he was there, and so he started, like, doing something, like, rust, rust, ruffling me up, and then I started crying, because it's just like, I don't know what to do, this kid is picking on me, I'm a pacifist, I'm eight years old. <laughs> so then they went, like, sledding down the hill, and then I went sledding down the hill, and then came back up again, and since we were with friends, then I was just like, I had to, like, save base, and so I was just like, oh, I wasn't really scared of that kid. And then, like, right when I said that, the kid was sitting right behind my friend, and he leaned back, and so I, I couldn't see him when I was saying, like, I wasn't afraid of him, because he'd been blocked by this friend. And then he just leaned back, and there he was. <laughs> I was just like, oh, crap! <laughs> and he, like, came up to me and, like, picked me up and, like, I don't know, body slammed me or whatever, but it wasn't, like, a rough body slam, but it was still scary enough that I started crying again. <laughs> and that's the story! And, like, there was one time when I was in bed and it was, like, 2 or 3 in the morning or something like that, and then somebody just, like, started, like, pounding on my door, um, and I, like, didn't know what it was or who it was, and I didn't have a peephole, and I was in my pajamas, and I wasn't gonna get up and figure out who's, like, right at my door, so I just, I don't know, I called the police, and then somebody was at my door, and then they stopped knocking, and then nobody came around, and that was that, <laughs> so... So I didn't know what to do, like, I didn't have any way to defend myself. So that was, like, really scary, because they could have broken in. And then I was just imagining, well, what would I do if they broke in? I couldn't do anything. I didn't have a, a closet to hide in, because it was a one-room apartment. Yeah. And then they just went away, and they'll never find out who it was! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing your stories with us tonight, boys. I have rooms prepared for both of you in the east wing of the manor. Vincent, please fetch their luggage and take it to their room. Thank you, Vincent. Thank you for listening, and as always, keep it creepy.